Just when I thought I'd cover them all. It looks like somebody ate it already once. Yes, chef. They were so sugary, was virtually inedible. I've uncovered a treasure trove of failed dishes that failed to make it to my previous video about all the gross food that's been served on Master Chef. Now, mind you, some of today's dishes are not for the faint of heart, so just keep that in mind going forward. So, let's check in on this contestant who screwed up one of the most basic ingredients in the world. When Season 7 Episode 3 kicked off, the home cooks who'd made it out of the auditions were pumped to tackle the challenges ahead of them head on. But Chef Ramsay and the production team were there to make a statement. Especially considering that this week's guest judge was none other than the legendary Wolfgang Puck himself. Puck is the god of the culinary world. I mean, come on. You'd expect someone to faint or at least squeal with excitement, but they managed to keep it together. At least for the most part, because the chefs were terrified knowing that they would have to cook for such a big shot. With America's most iconic food challenge, the Master Chef Mystery Box. Anyway, time waits for no one, and the Mystery Box Challenge came knocking. And, well, Puck got to do the honors. I have juice and an ingredient which comes in many colors, shapes, and forms, and I'm really excited. Welcome to America's most iconic food challenge. The home cooks were filled with nerves and trepidatiously lifted the boxes only to unveil... potatoes? Yeah, no, it was just potatoes. <laughs> Potatoes. But hold on, because this mystery box challenge was no joke. And the famous chef made that crystal clear. I've got some very important news. Who cooks the worst dish will be giving us back their white apron. Now, this little twist added more pressure to the already intense challenge. I mean, imagine how embarrassing it would be to leave Master Chef right from the start because of a potato dish, no less. As per usual, at the end of the challenge, three chefs were called out for having the worst dishes of the night. Now, the dishes you're about to see missed the mark by a huge margin. But for one contestant in particular, that was the least of their worries. So Nathan decided to go all out with a twice-baked potato topped with caramelized onions, bacon, and potato puree. Sounds good to me, but not according to the judges. You know, the whole color in here, does that like appetizing to you? No, chef. Poor Nathan was called out for his lack of imagination, and honestly, the way that he plated it didn't do him any favors either. Sorry, Nathan, but it is what it is. And to make things worse, Wolfgang Puck was more than disappointed with his dish. It looks like somebody ate it already once. Yes, chef. Yeah, there's no living down a burn from a living legend. And for a hat trick of failure, not even the taste was enough to save him. Maybe spice it up a little bit. I'm always looking for creativity. Chef Ramsay was genuinely embarrassed to serve something this uninspired to THE Wolfgang Puck. But I mean, talk about getting scared straight. Thankfully, Nathan managed to redeem himself come the elimination challenge, and getting destroyed by Wolfgang Puck had to have played a huge role in that moment of redemption. Speaking of elimination challenges, I want to talk about Season 9, Episode 7. And things were dramatic right from the start. Uh, what? <laughs> So, Caesar, who won the previous challenge, had the power to decide the fate of the remaining contestants. And everything depended on what he decided they'd have to cook, that being churros. But this wasn't going to be any ordinary churro challenge. Oh, no, no, no. It was being presented by none other than Alexi Lalas himself. Churros with chocolate sauce. Oh, my God. <sighs> you might remember him from his soccer career, but these days, he's killing it as a Fox Sports analyst. Now, Alexi gave everyone a quick reminder of Fox's coverage of the World Cup before revealing that Caesar chose churros for the night's main event. But here comes the crazy advantage that Caesar had as a team captain. You will get to pick 10 contestants to join you in safety up on the balcony. 10? Yeah, you heard that right, 10. Thanks to Caesar, 10 contestants headed up to the balcony, safe to cook another day. Those who remained only had one way out of the mess they were in, to nail those churros. Now, coming to the challenge, the contestants had just 30 minutes to whip up some delicious churros along with a mouth-watering chocolate sauce. It is one of the most challenging things. I don't put them on my restaurant menus unless I have the right talent to be able to execute them properly. So let's talk about Alicia. At first, she seemed to be in her element since she'd made churros before, but she took a risky move by tossing her freshly fried churros in cinnamon sugar pretty aggressively. 
think Alicia's showboating. Yes, we don't need to do that. All you're doing is beating those things up. She flipped them high, catching them in her bowl in an attempt to make an impression, but sadly, it backfired. At the end, kind of showboating, tossing those churros. You see how they're breaking apart? It's because of that. Aaron called her out for showing off instead of showcasing her actual skills. He was quick to criticize her technique and even went to the length of calling it disrespectful. Mistreating this really beautiful dish for me, that's just like super disrespectful, disappointing that you did that. To top it all off, Alicia had not only broken his confidence, but also ended up breaking her delicate churros in the process. This is why you don't show off until you're actually stepping up to the plate. But things were about to get much worse when Chef Ramsay got his hands on them. Absolutely clogged with sugar. I'm talking clump after clump after clump. This overcoated, sugary disaster was far from the treat that he was looking for. And when the famous chef took a bite, all that sugar fell straight off the churro and onto him. It's dry, it's crumbly. And like I said, taste everything you serve us. All she had to do was taste the dish and dust off all that excess sugar from it. But Alicia wanted to win the judges over with her sweetness, a strategy that clearly failed miserably. In the end, it all came down to two contestants. Bowen and Alicia found themselves in the hot seat. I'm curious to see what the balcony thinks. Caesar! The judges really wanted to hear what the safe contestants had to say for themselves. Who among the two would make it through and who among them would be heading home? But I'm sure you can guess which of the two was the night's big loser. Alicia? Alicia, chef. Alicia, chef. Alicia was heartbroken, but she simply didn't have it in her to go further in the competition. Oh, dear. To make things worse, the judges had way more to say. They were so sugary, was virtually inedible. Ouch. Tough pill to swallow, especially for someone who seemed so confident. Alicia's showboating played a crucial role in her downfall, and it's proof that strength and skill cannot be faked. Now, for a slight change of pace, I thought I'd bring up episode 4 of season 8 from MasterChef Junior. It's time for your mystery box challenge. So, another day, another mystery box challenge. But guess what? They weren't exactly greeted with the most pleasant aroma. Oh, okay, today might not be such an easy challenge. Inside the boxes was a giant monkfish, octopus, crickets, frog legs, and a whole bunch of other surprises that didn't exactly smell great. What the heck is that? While the young chefs were a little bit skeptical, Chef Ramsay assured them that these ingredients could be transformed into something delicious with a little bit of creativity and skill. But despite that assurance, one particular young cook's efforts fell short. When the judges went around to check on everyone's progress, Chef Ramsay had his eyes on McLean. He sensed that the pressure might be getting to him. Make sure you taste everything before you put it on the plate together. Mm -hmm. As the time was running out, the young cooks hustled to plate their dishes, hoping they'd manage to impress the judges. Looks really bad. Let's go, Ciara. Final minute, Freddy. I gotta see you hustle back there. Move, Freddy. But the big question remained: Who would face elimination? It was honestly anybody's game. Nobody had an advantage going into this challenge. Now, coming to Molly, she decided to go with monkfish with homemade biscuits, lemon aioli, and slaw with red wine vinaigrette. But Daphne wasn't impressed. According to her, the presentation was far from restaurant quality. We need to see a meal that feels restaurant quality. And I don't think the presentation of this nails that, even if the food does taste good. Well, I wouldn't be too harsh on her considering that she had far less experience than any of the adults in the room. But nobody's safe from high expectations in the MasterChef kitchen, whether Junior or the original. Chef Ramsay even went a step further with his criticism. But unfortunately, this dish is very ugly. You can't just clump monkfish. On the other hand, Aaron appreciated the seasoning of the fish, but Molly had missed a crucial detail. Missing the real core essence of the dish. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you. Now, circling back to Chef Ramsay, he delivered the final blow, declaring it as Molly's worst dish so far. Molly, unfortunately, I think it's your worst dish you've cooked in the competition so far. While Molly walked back to her station disappointed in herself, McLean's dish wasn't too far behind. When he presented his grilled octopus with spicy Israeli couscous, spicy chimichurri, baked sunchokes, and braised carrots, Chef Ramsay had more than one concern with the dish. So this dish is way out of proportion. The octopus was completely lost in the mess of ingredients on the plate. However, Ramsay had bigger fish to fry. My big concern about this dish is that the octopus looks undercooked. To make things worse, Aaron had plenty more to say about it. Couscous is overcooked. It's lacking salt. The sunchokes 
are very oily. McLean had to have been feeling so dejected at this point. I mean, the poor kid was putting on his best brave face, but well, the criticism was getting harder to bear by the minute. I'd wager that a good number of adults would have done the same. Thankfully, Chef Ramsay kept his feedback short and succinct, at least, and McCain was asked to head back to his station. So, there were two dishes that had too many elements which failed to come together, but one of them would get the boot. Young man, I'm so sorry. Can you three say goodbye to McLean, please, and head back to your stations? Thank you. Yup, it was McLean. But Jeff Ramsey wasn't about to let him go without a few words of encouragement. You've been amazing in this competition. Think what you've done, think we've achieved. Promise you're gonna continue cooking. He deserved that little pat on the back as he left, for sure. But here comes a challenge where pretty much everybody started floundering. And the result was beyond disgusting. Listen, you're gonna give me the basket that I want, or you will become my mission in life. So, Season 6 Episode 5 really shook things up with a twist that put everyone on edge. The episode kicked off with a mystery box challenge, and Jesse came out on top as the winner. But instead of heading back to the pantry to discover his advantage, he was at the receiving end of some shocking news. For the first time ever in MasterChef, you will not be going back into that pantry with us. You're gonna get your major advantage right here. Yup, Jesse held the reins for the day as the remaining contestants were introduced to an ingredient that Graham referred to as an awe-inspiring gift from Mother Nature. Yeah, I've got more questions than answers here. But with anticipation building among the contestants, the time for the big reveal eventually came calling. It's beautiful. What is in this box? Chef Ramsay asked Steven what he thought could be in the box, and boy did he have a hell of a reply. My destiny. <laughs> and what do you know, he was actually right. The mystery ingredient wouldn't be unveiled until they stepped foot in the pantry. Jesse, meanwhile, was treated to yet another advantage. If Jesse hands you a regular basket, then you'll be asked to make a savory dish. Jesse hands you a basket with a bow, then you'll be making a sweet dish. Using this incredible ingredient in a sweet dish could either be a game changer, or as Chef Ramsay put it, it could be game over. The stakes were definitely high, and Jesse had to make the decision of who to hand the baskets out to. Give it to me, please. <laughs> But what exactly was his strategy? I'm just gonna give the weaker contestants sweet basket. They're probably gonna struggle. You're bacon. <laughs> uh huh, weeding out the weaker contestants by challenging them with a sweet dish. Now, he was only going by Chef Ramsay's words that the mystery ingredient would be tricky in a sweet dish. But was the famous chef trying to pull wool over his eyes? <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely call corn a tough sell in a desert. But let me tell you, the pantry was overflowing with all kinds of the stuff. Fresh white and yellow corn, canned corn, corn tortillas, popcorn, and even candy corn. I mean, that isn't exactly corn, but that's a topic for another day. Anyway, Steven was over the moon because he'd been growing corn for years and absolutely loved working with it. But Tommy and Charlie couldn't wrap their heads around what to do with it. Meanwhile, Veronica was really struggling with the very concept of incorporating corn into a dessert. Which is weird, since desserts and baking were well within her wheelhouse. My brain doesn't want to go down corn and dessert. It says those two don't go together. Eventually, Veronica went with corn creme brulee, and she seemed to be pretty confident about her decision. I'm dedicating this dessert to my first and oldest granddaughter. I'm making corn creme brulee. Meanwhile, Justin was whipping up a cream puff stuffed with corn and topped with a candy corn sauce. This was something Graham wasn't too sure about. Do you think that's excessive or no? No. I don't understand what you're making here with all this stuff. When Christina tasted the filling, she suggested adding more salt. But Justin thought it'd be a brilliant idea to snub her to her face. Don't forget, you're probably gonna need salt. That's my most polite way of telling you. Definitely did not have enough salt in it. Let's see if that comes back to bite him in the end. First though, Veronica had to present her dish. I'm feeling really confident and I'm feeling like they're gonna like it so much. Veronica, what'd you make? Christina was looking for that perfect crack on the brulee. You can hear that crack. The only texture that a perfectly creamy creme brulee really needs. Let's give it a taste. And Veronica's confidence didn't exactly reflect in the dish. The creme brulee is not well done at all. Too much fat and cooked too high too quickly. It was a major technique fail, and Christina wasn't impressed. Caramel on top of the creme brulee. That, for me, definitely succeeded in, but corn challenge, it's not the, a caramelized sugar. Next up, it was Justin's turn to present his profiteroles filled with sweet cream corn and topped with candy corn caramel. 
and Chef Ramsay stepped up to deliver his judgment. Should place it undercooked because it's got a sort of wet, almost like a wet cornflake inside. Yeah, Chef. Sadly, the pastry was undercooked, the filling was overly sweet, and to top it all off, he thought it would be a brilliant idea to use canned corn for the filling. Like, we've had this discussion about canned food a million times before, but these guys just never learn. And Chef Ramsay was about as upset as you'd expect him to be. You don't think that the best flavor would have come from a fresh corn? Uh, likely. But there was one other contestant with an equally disappointing offering. Your grits give me the Charlie's attempt at yellow corn grits with New Orleans barbecue shrimp was lambasted for its undercooked grits and for failing to let the corn shine as the star ingredient. I come from humble ingredients and humble so beginnings, I, but I want to give me some of that love. I don't want to taste it. After some serious deliberation, the judges had finally arrived at their decision. Three chefs had made it to the bottom of the list. Now, now, try not to go and gasp when you hear their names. Yeah, everybody expected that one. Charlie was the first one to be saved, leaving Veronica and Justin, the oldest and the youngest contestants of that season, fighting for that last spot. But the decision was made. Justin, your time is done. Tough break for Justin, but the show must go on. And go on it did. But just one season back in the past, season 5, Mark was confidently presenting his peppercorn filet with Bernay sauce and whipped rosemary garlic potatoes, thinking he nailed the classic French dish. Spoiler alert, he was not even close. Have you ever been to France? No. French cookbooks? French no. restaurants? No. Okay, okay. So you're kind of flying blind. Yes. Okay. Mark, blissfully unaware of the nuances of French cuisine, challenged himself to dive in headfirst anyway. But the pool he was diving into may as well have been empty given how flat that he fell. I have a filet crusted peppercorn, uh, creamy rosemary garlic mashed with a bernet sauce. Joe didn't even have to taste the dish to poke about a million holes in it. You normally put bernet sauce on your steak? French. Not many French people I know. And those mashed potatoes were tough to ignore. Does consistency look nice? You like the thickness of it? I would have liked them a little thicker. Thicker than that? But here's the kicker. When Joe finally took a taste, his reaction said it all. And flour? I had a little bit of starch because it was raw. Liquidy. That is a severe technical error. I'm surprised that you're surprised, Joe. Everybody knows that raw freaking flour is as traditionally French as it gets. Sarcasm aside, it turns out that Mark actually tried to salvage his runny mashed potatoes by adding raw flour in a desperate bid to get them to thicken up. A completely asinine idea that blew up in his face. And the famous chef didn't take this butchery of French cuisine very lightly. There are several things that you can never do in cooking, and adding flour to a liquid mashed potato is one of them. There was no coming back from this disaster, and Mark knew it. It was time for him to head home, a fate that had been long overdue. Now, I'm pretty confident that I've covered the biggest stinkers that the Master Chef Kitchen has ever seen by this point. But if you think I missed one, make sure to let me know in the comments section down below. Who knows, I might feature your suggestion in my upcoming videos. You could also leave me a message on my social media pages, and as usual, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And hey, if you thought this video was insane, then wait till you see this next one, it's even crazier!